Hello everyone, Tommy J here and welcome to I Show You Games. Today I'm here to show you Ghost Gree, or Ghost Gurry. I'm honestly not quite sure how to pronounce it, um, I mean like the go is in orange so it could be either. Anyway, this game is developed by Demigiant, or more specifically a developer named Daniele Giardini. Now that's an Italian name, I'm sorry if I got it wrong, could also just be Daniel Giardini, I'm honestly not sure. And as far as his career goes, he has in the past started a few companies, um, Hollyville and Hollyville Games, which he then shut down in favour of starting a new company called Demi Giant. So as far as his developing experience goes, he has developed games for pretty much every platform there is aside from consoles. So Android, iOS, um, Steam, Windows, Mac, so just the standard PC stuff as well. And then Unity Web Player as well, which is something you don't often see on developers, I guess, web pages. Anyway, uh, this game that we have right here is, I guess it's a Temple Run style arcade game. In that it's that procedurally generated, just dive and weave kind of thing. Anyway, before we get started, let's have a quick look at the options menu. So there's sound, volume slider, uh, graphics, bare, low, medium and high. I've got it on high. And I've turned the FPS limiter off. So just as some of you may be aware, my system is not incredible. Um, graphics card is a 680M. And I'm running this at over 400 frames a second on high. So I don't see any system at all having any difficulty with running this game on high. Simply put, don't see any issue with it whatsoever. You can also change the resolution, change to full screen or windowed. There's also fully rebindable controls, which is always very, very nice. Anyway, let's get on to the game itself, enough talking. So there are a bunch of different modes and you can change your ship, which I will talk about in a little bit. But first off, let's just get the basics going. So in this game, the controls are you can turn left, you can turn right, you can jump and you can evade. So jumping looks like that, evading looks like this and you would evade that hazard. So there are three different types of hazards. That one we just saw, that taller thing, which you dodge sideways, and then uh, two different hazards that you jump over. One of them is a little wall, and the other is a gap, and I just passed one of the gaps, and there's a little wall. So yeah, that's all three hazards. And as far as the controls go, that's almost it. There's just one more thing. You can boost, so you can move a bit faster. On the right-hand side, you'll notice there's a speed multiplier, just, sorry, speed bonus, I was looking at it uh, instead of looking at where I was going. And what happens when you use that is you go faster and you get a higher score for what you're doing. Also, your ship kind of changes in its appearance. So if you look at my ship right now, if I use the boost, I'm moving it a bit faster. There's a red trail and the front of it kind of expands out, which I think is really cool that there's that little visual cue that you've um, used the boost. And if you use the boost, it does get very fast, even right off the bat. Very, very hard, actually, this game is like... Precision is key, and precision is required. Now, there's one other little thing that I haven't spoken about, um, and that is these purple arrows. They're pretty much like a forced speed boost area. So when you go over them, it automatically puts you up to that times 3.3, and you can't use your speed boost to make yourself any faster, but you also can't let it drop off. So yeah, it just forces you to go at that 3.3 with the higher score, higher speed. Which means that if you aren't comfortable with that higher speed, you are going to have to get comfortable with it, essentially, which I like. I also do like that the boost is... Obviously, um, for the rest of the time, the boost is optional. You don't have to have it on if you don't want it on. Like right now, I don't have it on because I'm trying to talk and do things at the same time. Now as far as these boost sections go, there are two different types and you saw the first type before, this is the second type right now. So the first one is no obstacles, top down view and um, lots and lots of turns. And this, the other one is no turns, it's just flat, just straight and you have a um, just have to dodge obstacles. Yeah, that's it. Brain turned off a little bit there. So you may have noticed as I'm playing, we've gone through different worlds and just the background, like the stuff down here does look different. And that's because the further you advance through the game, uh, the 
further you get, the worlds change. And there is an achievement for getting to the last world. I haven't been able to get it yet. I actually haven't gotten past the third city, so I don't know how many there are. Anyway, let's have a quick talk about the score screen because I actually think it's really, really interesting. So you have your distance, you have any combos you performed, like GOAT, I know, is if there are two obstacles you have to jump over in a row, you get a GOAT. Um, snake, I would imagine, is just multiple turns over and over. You also have your max multipliers. So as the game goes on, it does speed up. Somewhere in this third world, you normally get, um, get a bit faster, so it moves to 1.2 times speed passively instead of that 1.0. And then you have your total score, your previous best score, your new average and your previous average. And I do like that that previous average and the new average is there. I think that's a really cool comparison. So prior to that run, my average score was almost 89,000 and now it's almost, well, a bit above 97,000. Really cool. There's also one more thing and that is just the path you took, the little map you took. And it is procedurally generated, so it will be different anytime. Anyway, let's go back to the menu. And there are a few more things I want to talk about. So you can change your ship. Uh, and these are unlocked just by completing certain achievements. So for this one, you need to find all cities. And for this one, you need to achieve a score achievement rank of 20. So these are the ones you start with the Rackety, but the Rascal, Biker and Sailor are all similar to this. So achieve a score achievement rank of something. And they all look different. Um, they don't perform any differently. The Psycho is the only one that's different. See, it's the only one with that kind of mouse over tooltip. And it says faster and harder, but also more rewarding. So at this stage, um, the dev actually made a post somewhere about this, and he said that only three people have unlocked the Psycho. So I might just change to the Sailor. I do like the Sailor, it reminds me of uh, Star Wars pod racing. And let's just have a quick look at some of the achievements. So there are score achievements, which is literally get a score of a certain value and you get an extra little bar in here, so I've got three on these and Sorry, two on these three, three on this one, one on that one. And then there are actual achievements, like written achievements. Uh, and these work on Steam as well. So fly for a total of two hours, get to the next city, get to all cities, um, avoid an obstacle without jumping or evading. I haven't been able to figure that out. Or do a 360 and survive, do a 1440 and survive, headbutt 50 walls and dividers, or fall 50 times. I actually, there are some small bugs, just display bugs with these two. I've actually gotten both of them, and when I die for the first time in a pro game, they will come up. Anyway, let's talk a bit about the different difficulty levels. So this one I'm on right now is pro. Um, there are no changes in the hazards. The change is the camera. So before, you will have noticed that it was kind of a third person camera. It followed you, just zoomed out behind your back. But in pro, it's a fixed camera. So it means you need to think more about what direction you're facing, whether pushing left or right will actually turn you the direction you want to turn. However, when you go into this speed boost right now, it does put you back into that third person view, sort of how when you're in uh, this view normally, if you go into that other speed boost, it gives you that top down view like I have right now. Anyway, let's just get through this. So training, which is the lowest difficulty, um, is pretty much the same as hard, the one I was on before, except it has no hazards, so none of these yellow things. It's pretty much just turning left and right, and that's it. And that's actually okay, because it does take you a little bit of time to get used to the controls. And the controls are fairly difficult. And speaking of, by default, they're actually bound to the arrows. Um, so yeah, just your little arrow keys. But I being a, oh god, being a bit more of a gamer, ended up rebinding them to WASD. But I had some serious problems with avoiding these walls, those, like this one right there. Okay, I've just sped up so it's on a bit faster than normal. Um, yeah, the these ones, that one that I just went around. And that's because it was by default bound to S. And having to reach that extra little bit, I found really difficult, particularly if you were making a turn and then had to immediately push it. So what I've actually done is I have A and D bound to left and right, W bound to jump, and then just a random key. I think it's K. Yeah, it is K, I looked. <laughs> Terrible idea, um, but yeah. K bound to jump, and that's just left hand, W-A-D, right hand on K. 
Which, I mean, it's working fairly well for me. Let's change up the ship again. Working fairly well for me. So, I recommend that if you do get this and struggle with the controls a little bit, give that a go. Anyway, there are two more modes I want to show you. And in my mind, this is more of a typical easy, medium, hard. And then these two are more bonus modes. So, Speed Freak is made up of literally only those speed boost areas. So, straight into one. And once I come out of this one, I will immediately hit the next one, which is the one with no hazards. And I think it's cool that this mode's available, but I do find this, like, my highest score is in this mode. And I do find this one the easiest by a fair bit. Having said that, though, I am the type of person who gets a little impatient. So, in uh, the other three uh, modes, training... Hard and Pro, I actually activate the boost and just have the boost running constantly. Uh, in this video, I haven't been doing that because it is actually quite difficult playing this game and talking at the same time, so... Yeah. So right there, precision is very, very important. I mean, what score did I get then? Jeez, a million. Not bad. Much higher than I was getting in the other mode because it's got that forced boost with your multipliers. Let's just look at that. Yeah, all those turns. Crazy. But yeah, let's change the ship again, just show you a different one, and go to Paranoid. So one thing I like about this game is the degree of control that you do have, and the fact that you do need to be precise. I did not push dodge early enough then. Because you need to be so precise, it's can be fairly punishing on newer players. Like, as I said, I was really struggling with those taller walls that you need to dodge around when I started. And even now, I still sometimes mistime them um, because you do only have a small window for error when it comes to them. I feel like you have a bigger window when it comes to jumping. But yeah. Anyway, this mode is paranoid and you may have noticed that I'm running into all purple things, so let's just activate that speed boost. That's because the purpose of this mode is that it's pretty much the same as Pro, so it has that top-down camera angle, but you have to hit all purple obstacles and avoid all yellow ones. So right now I'm using the boost. Let's just get that. No, nah, turn too early. And turning too early and turning too late is actually something that people do a fair bit. Anyway, Let's just go back to Pro. And I want to talk a bit more about the sharpness of the controls. So they're incredibly responsive. If I were to say, do a jump and then halfway through decide I shouldn't have done the jump, it will interrupt it. So let's just... Did it a bit early then. But right now, like, if I were to dodge and jump, it will kind of interrupt it, which is nice because if you do make that mistake, you can come back from it. Similarly, right now, I'm going to push, well, once I'm on a straight, I'm going to push right then left and just watch what the ship does after I get around that. Okay, right then left. See how it actually goes off the track, but I have time to bring it back. That's another thing that I think is really cool about this game, um, because if you make a mistake and turn the wrong way, you can bring it back. You do have the time to do that. It doesn't just immediately turn you off the track. Similarly, you can do a bit of a Zoolander. Don't know what I mean? Like that. I just turned right a bunch of times. That time I screwed it up. But if you don't want to turn left, you don't have to turn left. You can turn right three times instead. So let's just turn left. <laughs> and I think it's really cool that you can do that. There's actually two achievements based off doing that. And that's how I realized you could do it was through looking through the achievements and having a look at what you could do. And yeah, I, I think it's great that it actually does have that degree of control and you can come back from your mistakes. As I've said before, I, I think that's brilliant and something that isn't normally a part of this genre. So let's just speed up. So there's a few other things that this game has. Um, Aside from the aesthetic, which obviously is quite magnificent, like just looking at that little city below that actually changes as you progress through the game, and I think randomizes in color as well, I'm not quite sure on that. Uh, there's also the music. And the music in this game is very, very good. And there are a bunch of songs, I mean, the... 
the musician's name is listed on the game for a reason because it's good music and you can buy this soundtrack if you like it. And that's just on the Ghost Scary website and you probably will be able to on Steam but I cannot confirm or deny that at this time. So yeah, when you go through the speed boost, the music does speed up in time with your movements. But if you use a normal boost, just if I right now turn on my boost, it doesn't speed up with you. Which I'm fine with, because I use the boost a lot and I feel like um, some, some of the music isn't quite as good when it's sped up. Let's dodge that. So one other cool thing that is actually in here to do with the music is that you can change the song manually. If I want. I can next song. And I like that that's in there because there is, I mean, the songs are different, but it means if you want to listen to a certain song and you might not want to listen to others, then you can do that. Oh God, so many turns. So it does get a little more hectic and I mean, right then I wasn't using a boost or anything, but it is, it is a hard game. Simply put, the game is hard. And I think that really does work in its favor. Like, it really works in its favor. Anyway, let's just... There is an online leaderboard that you can submit to. But let's just change the ship to the sailor, because it's my favorite. We'll give this one more go. And depending on how I do in this run, I might just add a clip of me playing without talking or anything like that at the end of the video uh, just so yeah you can you can have a look at what the game is like when someone's actually fully concentrating on it and how far you can get kind of thing so yeah I'll just add that clip at the end of the video but I'm gonna use a speed boost for this whole run and see how I go Ooh. So, there is also uh, something that's very important in this game is obviously the replayability. And I think it has a... I mean, it's got a good amount of replayability in my opinion. It depends what you're interested in though. Like, I do like online leaderboards and that kind of thing. I like competing with other people. I like competing with my friends. So, for me, leaderboards are a good thing. If they're not, there are those in-game challenges such as being able to hit a certain score and eventually unlocking that psycho ship that I am yet to be able to unlock. I'm not even close to unlocking it, actually. And, I mean, by unlocking that ship, it makes the game even harder, and I would imagine it raises your speed and score multiplier by a fair bit. And that would be how it does that. Oh, God. So many turns. And going on to the third area. It's probably going to do a bit more turning, yep. Oh, turn the wrong way. No! What a mistake. It's okay, I got an okay score. That's actually uh, only a little bit below my best, so that's not bad. Not bad. Anyway, this game, as far as I know, is going to cost $7.99 on Steam, so whether that's worth it is completely up to you and whether you enjoy the game. But as far as this genre goes, this is probably one of the better games I've played. Um, It's sharp and responsive, and that's really... Really important. Anyway, overall this game is definitely an enjoyable little arcade runner. So yeah, as I said, the controls are smooth and responsive, the gameplay feels good, and the aesthetics are really nice. There's a good amount of replayability, whether it's completing all the achievements, going for high scores, or just even unlocking the different ships. I also like that there's all of those different game modes I showed you that aren't just easy to super hard, they actually change the rules and the gameplay up, they don't just spawn more things, which is always good. So yeah, Ghost Scary is currently available on the Steam store or the game's website, which is ghostscary.com, um, for $7.99 US dollars. And there's a link to both of those in the description. Anyway, guys, thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to favorite, like, and or subscribe. This has been Tommy J with I Show You Ghost Scary. Thanks for watching and have a good one.